In the previous videos, we've configured identities for users and applications, and we've set up mappings for all of them except for our Pi interface. And for our Pi interface, we set up 2 plus trusts. And this is really great because we've made sure that we're using the most secure authentication methods possible. However, if we don't make sure that we've also disabled the ability to use the less secure authentication options on our Pi Data Archive, then we're at risk. So let me show you where the possible authentication options are set up and how we can make sure that we're at the recommended settings. So we're going to do this in Pi System Management Tools, and I'm going to go to the Security plugin and navigate down here to Security Settings. So when I click on this, you'll see that this security slider bar showed up. And the reason why I can see the settings here is because how I authenticate has read access on the Pi Tuning and the Pi User Database Security tables. And if I have write access on those tables as well, I'll be able to make adjustments here. You want to make sure that you're at least at this level and that all three of these have green checks indicating that these are disabled. You can learn about these different security levels in our PyLive library. We have this section which is specifically goes through what all these levels are. A few things that I want to highlight is that these three, they really deal with an outdated authentication method. Prior to Data Archive versions 34, 380, 36, there were Pi usernames and passwords, and a given user could type in any username and password when connecting. And this is what we call explicit login. Now we introduce integration with our Windows Active Directory accounts in 3.4.3.80.36, which is why now we set up mappings to our Windows groups and accounts. But the explicit login method still exists to support backwards compatibility. And even in new systems, there are default Pi users that still exist. I want to emphasize that using explicit login is not secure. And we want to make sure that our users and applications connect with mappings and trusts and that they cannot use explicit login. To make sure of this, we want to make sure that our security settings here are at least at this level. Let me show you what could happen if our security settings were not at this level. For example, here the security settings are in the lowest possible level. This means even blank passwords are allowed. Now, let's say we have a new employee, Andy. And Andy hasn't completed his training yet, so we're not ready to give him access to the Pi system. But let's say he's curious about some of the clients that are installed on his machine and decides to open up Pi system management tools and just click around. Depending on the connection settings on his machine, even if he can't authenticate with a mapping or a trust, he could receive a login prompt just like this, which would allow him to explicitly log in. Now, Andy doesn't know the PyDemo password, but in this case, PyDemo has a blank password, so if he hits OK, he is now authenticated on the data archive. Down here, we can indeed confirm that he did authenticate as PyDemo. And keep in mind that this essentially gives him access without the mapping or a trust. Now, hopefully PyDemo doesn't have permissions to do many things, but it illustrates the importance of disabling blank passwords. Let's look at another example. Say our security settings have been moved up one level higher, so we are no longer allowing blank passwords, but we're still allowing explicit login for PyAdmin. 
what could happen in this case? Well, again, Andy still shouldn't have any access, and he can still try to open up Pi System Management Tools, and again, click around. Depending on the connection settings on this machine, he may receive an explicit login prompt. And let's say the username is currently set at Pi Admin. Now, fortunately on our server, Pi Admin doesn't have a blank password, but maybe Andy guesses it because it's a common password at the company, or he's even seen the password written down somewhere at somebody's desk. Oh no, we can see that he was successful, and that means he was able to authenticate as Pi Admin. Again, this is without the mapping or a trust. And Pi Admin happens to be the very worst possible case because Pi Admin is a super user with all privileges on the data archive. I think this makes it really clear that we absolutely want to make sure to disable explicit login for Pi Admin to avoid these type of scenarios. And we want to avoid having anyone be able to use Pi users to explicitly log in. This method is not secure and it circumvents the mappings that we have set up. Given this, we want to make sure to bring our slider bar up to the recommended default level. If you are in an existing system and the slider bar is not at this level yet, you want to make sure to shift all your users and applications authentications to newer methods by creating mappings and trusts. And after successfully confirming they are not authenticating using the older explicit login, then move the slider bar up to this setting. Keep in mind that adjustments to the slider bar, as you can see, are going to typically require a restart of the Pi-based subsystem to take effect. Lastly, in our system, we're only using trust for our Pi interface. And that means that we only have API trusts. Since we're not using SDK trusts for things like Pi Coresight, but are using mappings instead, this means that we'll be able to move this default up to this level and disable SDK trusts. And this is an even more secure configuration that you can do as long as you're not using SDK trusts. Now, if you're using Pi interfaces, you will always need to have API trusts. And so this is going to be the highest level that you can use for security in that situation. With that, I hope you've ensured that the least secure authentication methods have been disabled on your Pi data archive.